Moose. Moose will do. Are you at the top of the totem pole, in the middle of the totem pole? Well, the totem pole's kind of irrelevant sometimes. I, the podium is different than a totem pole. So I'm actually the East Coast uh, Rust Tire Distributor, but we do all the AMA, Weir Nationals, and the Astra rounds. So I handle all the free of charge tires, so I do all the sponsored riders in the U.S. The local tire uh, vendor here, Pirelli vendor, Aaron Lanningham, can he get the same kind of tires that you bring in supply when you come to these kinds of events? Uh, for the most part, yes. We do all the development work for the U.S. at the AMA, so those tires are controlled. You know, we have to make sure that we take the disposed tires, the used tires away and all that because they're all test tires. So you have to test somewhere in order to improve the production tires for your club racers and street riders. So for the most part, those tires are only accessible to a handful of guys. But sometimes that filters down to, you know, for different needs. So give me an example of the kind of guys we're talking about that are riding these uh, development tires. Uh, to start with, Jeff May and Michael Barnes, who are doing real well on that. But here this weekend, they're actually running a mix of uh, development tires and production tires, both. So Barney did a 54-1 today on a set of production slicks. So that was working pretty good. Well, let's uh, talk about some of the tires you got here. What are these? With, with Pirelli, everything we have, uh, basically we have four compounds of rear in production and three fronts. And you can either tell them very simply by a one, two, or a three, or the color stripe that's on, on the tread, which is on the slicks, the reins, and the DOTs. It means the same thing in the range. The compound might be a little different, but the color code puts you in the range that tire is in. So, and they're offered in all the sizes this way. All the compounds are available in all sizes. And these tires here are the ones that are production tires available to the track day user of the club. Right, yes, exactly. And or the AMA privateer as well. Um, let's have a look at the rain tires here. Um, so this is new uh, last year, a, a different front for us. And uh, the strange thing happened a couple of weeks ago in a track in Illinois, Joliet, called Autobahn which is really similar to the way this place operates, is where you can be a member and show up and ride at any time, and it's really pretty cool. But it didn't even rain on race day, and every lap turned on the Sunday race day was done on a rain tire. The track was 80% dry, and we ran all day on rains on a dry track, basically, because where the water was standing was too deep in two spots for any other tire to go through it. It was the damnedest thing I've seen in 25 years as a tire guy. I couldn't believe it. And these are all full wanes, and they come in the same number of compounds as the other tires. And this is an intermediate. This is for uh, intermediate tires. Uh, when they're the proper selection, or the tire of choice, there's nothing to beat them because it's basically when you know the line is going to dry. So you start out on a tire that's going to channel some water, then work real good when the line dries at the same time. So we have these in, in uh, 17s and 16 fives. Is there anything you see with track riders or club racers, any common mistakes that they make right off the bat when they get into the sport that, that you could kind of head them off? Well, i got a couple rules of thumb for that. You get what you pay for, safety equipment and tires. If you're getting cheap tires, you're not going to get the same life or performance out of them. It's, just not to, it's not apples to apples. The biggest problem with every motorcycle rider at, at any level in the U.S., street guy, cafe guy, sport guy, whatever is not selecting the tire pressure properly for what they're doing because at the end of the day the tire pressure regulates the whole shape and the contact patch of your tire so guys that don't know or are not willing to learn to manage your pressures properly pay the price in tire usage can they get that kind of information from uh, from their local Pirelli guys he gonna have that for them? all they got to do is ask ask a question get an answer or listen to the answer that was the second part of that so if you can actually get a guy to ask you it's one thing, but getting him to listen to what you have to say sometimes is another. Because one of the things that we've learned now is uh, we're actually doing everything now with hot pressures off the warmer for, you know, we're trying to heat the, the rim to 100 degrees with time on a warmer. Then we set the pressure hot and it goes to the track at that pressure. And if everything's correct, it comes back at the same pressure. So that way we're having no tire growth on the track at all. It stays the same. And the consistency in doing it is making the rear tire live a, a longer, fast life. So a lot of guys you know, you're having issues with the tires. It only goes away after six laps. Well, chances are it was overinflated, which narrows the contact patch, which centralizes the heat and the wear on the tire, and it goes greasy, 
hence the performance drops off. Well, if the pressure is regulated with a heated tire to start with, you don't have a rise, and the contact patch stays consistent through the whole, the whole race. Is there a target temperature that you shoot for? We don't even use temperature anymore. We do everything on pressure. By checking the pressure when you come in and off the track, you do it all by pressure now. The only thing I use a parometer for anymore is checking the track temperature. When you say you're heating up the tire in the rim to get a hot pressure, you're using it with a tire warmer. You're just taking whatever temperature that tire warmer produces? We, we like it to be in the 165 to 175 degree range. Now, in order to do that, you really need to go to Radio Shack and buy yourself a very cheap, inexpensive pyrometer. Otherwise, you're only guessing at what your, your tire warmer is giving you or what, what your rim width, your rim temperature is going to be or any of that. So that's 30 bucks. And there's a, a tire that's been sitting in the sun a little bit in the back of the trailer. The traditional track day concept that's floating around the track day paddock is you unload your bike, the first thing you do is check your cold tire pressures, and you're done. You're saying, we're not doing that anymore. Well, depending on the tires you're using. If you're using, uh, for example, our Pirelli Diablo courses, they're a high-performance street tire made to lean towards track day use. Those tires, uh, if, you, if you're riding those kind of tires and you don't have warmers, first of all, they operate at a lower operating range. It takes more temperature for a race tire. That's the reason those other tires are such better street tires. Uh, a guy could go out and put in three or four laps and play with his tire pressure and, and, and find his spot. But you got to be willing to get off the bike and check the pressure and play with it a little bit. A half pound or a pound increment change sometimes is a huge difference in the performance you get on the track. So do you have a hot tire pressure for the guy running those tires, a target range for his hot tire pressure? Not really because everybody kind of heats the tire a little different for themselves. So it's a little bit of a hunt and search thing on those things for, because the like, optimum temperature range for those tires is 130, 140. These tires work 160, 180. And that's one of the other things that's kind of always got on my nerves is uh, street guys keep thinking they got to have race tires because they live on a curvy road but they're really just wiring the rubber away without getting any of the benefits because they never get the tire in the operating range for temperature. You've got to continue to pound out some serious speed in order to keep that heat in there. Right, you might get, if you lived on a, a mountain road like I live in the Smoky Mountains and we've got nice curvy roads everywhere, and I've carried this out on a couple rides and I, I weigh 275 pounds. I got a 500 pound motorcycle and my tire temperature never goes over 110 degrees. So guys tell me they, can, they need a, a race tire to ride up and down the road. I ain't buying it. If I've got a track day customer and he's pretty dedicated to the track, he's got a track bike, and he's going to switch to some DOT race rubber, you recommend just go ahead and get those tire warmers and do the hot pressure thing? Well, you end up saving money in the long run because your tire wear will be better. Crashing might be less too because the guys crash on cold tires or greasy tires all the time, but the key thing is paying attention to the pressure. and you got to get off and check the pressure because otherwise you have no idea what's going on. Is there a place uh, a guy can go to, say on the web, on the Pirelli site where he can get that kind of information? Actually, we're in the process now of uh, translating this into some kind of a format for that because we've only been doing this about a year, year and a half, and uh, the word of mouth has got some kind of diluted down the chain, so we're in, it's a process of that happening now, some kind of way of releasing that information where guys can find a range to run it in. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate it. And what was your name again? I'm Moose. Do you have a special uh, Q tire, qualifying tire? Yeah, if I say that, then Jim Allen's going to go, we only got soft race tires at Dunlop. So I'm going to say the same thing. We only got soft race tires here. Brilliant. Brilliantly done. Thank you.